In this video, I'm going to review these, the world's widest jacking beams from AC Hydraulics. So if you're like me, before I buy anything, I go on the internet, primarily YouTube, to do a bit of research on the product I want to buy. And I wanted to buy wide jacking beams for this four post lift. And I came across these, but I couldn't find any information online or any videos. So that's the purpose of this video. So previously I was using these very old jacking beams which I inherited from the previous um, owner and uh, they're ancient and they don't go wide enough for modern cars so I was rather struggling with those. So I work on electric vehicles and I wanted a jacking beam that was wide enough to lift a Tesla Model S and uh, there was just nothing out there. There was a lot that were close and I could probably just about cope with them. But then I came across these and these are meant to be the world's widest span jacking beams. So these are uh, from AC Hydraulics and the one I bought was the 2600 kilogram version which is SD26LW. And the span of these is 780 millimeters minimum to 1865 millimeters maximum. So plenty wide enough for any electric vehicle and as you can see they span the width of the four post lift here. And here I've got a Hyundai Kona electric on the lift and when you've got a battery pack underneath you've got to jack up in the correct places in this case it's bog standard it's on the seals uh, particularly with teslas they have jacking points along the uh, battery rails and you've got to jack up on those jacking points you mustn't jack up on the battery pack so that's why i wanted a wide span jacking beam so i can span that battery pack and jack up on the proper places and like all modern cars the underside is covered in plastic trays so you can't jack up on any other places at the front on this particular car. And while there's no plastic trays on the back end of this car, on many cars now all of this is just covered in plastic and you just can't jack up on any of it. So my overall impression of these is they are really over-engineered for what they need to do. The gauge of the metal is just so thick and um, you get a lot of metal work here for your money. Um, it, it's impressive quality however there's one thing that I'm not that impressed with and a bit wary of is the bolts that fix the uh, support arms but anyway we'll talk about that in a minute so these come in two versions two ton or 2.6 ton this is the 2.6 ton I would imagine the two ton one is um, just as chunky as it were it will just be the rating of the rams I guess but um, this unit weighs 120 kilograms on its own and then I'd assume you've got to add on the weight of the uh, support arms and wheels or whatever version of uh, fixings you require for your ramp. Um, so yeah, they're heavy old things. So you've got this very wide platform which you can lift a vehicle on if needed. Uh, you can put rubber blocks on here. But I've never done that because I'm always lifting electric vehicles, so obviously I need to span the battery pack and lift on the proper jacking points. Um, you've then got these rubber feet with uh, metal claw underneath, and that then drops down like that. I would imagine there's very few times you're going to use this on its own without an extension bar because this isn't giving you enough clearance. But you get these two extension bars as standard so that sits there that then drops on like that or you can use the taller one like that and as optional extras there's also a circular extension uh, set that can fit in there if you need to and then all of these sit down in these two U brackets on the jacking beam and then you've got the full set for either sides. I also bought uh, the full set of extension arms which AC Hydraulics sell 
So I bought four of each. This is the 130 millimeter extension arm. And this is part number 6212500. And then these are the 208 millimeter extensions, which is part number 6212600. And these would be particularly useful if you're lifting 4x4s and pickups and that sort of type of vehicle. So, as for lifting, they do a version which you can connect up to an airline, but I prefer the manual version. And these lift pretty high. So the manual says this lifts 250 millimetres, which, yes, yeah, it's, it's 260 actually. But in my case, with these arms on the way I've mounted it, um, that's 31 centimetres to the top of, top of the uh, jacking arm there. And then, of course, you've got your extension plates on top as well. And there's a look inside. And as you can see, all of this is just made really well. And then it's got a two-handed drop. So this handle lifts that safety locking arm there. And then this one drops the ram. So it's a two-handed operation, so you're not going to get your fingers trapped in there. And to drop it, you lift the locking arms with that one, and then drop it with that one. Obviously, with the weight of a vehicle on it, it's going to drop much quicker. But there we go. You also get a safety kit, which is basically four metal bars here and some... Uh, unusually shaped nuts and bolts which you bend and make a sort of a U bracket uh, to support the jacking beam if it comes off its wells. Uh, I'm not using it because in my particular circumstance here it doesn't actually achieve anything so not really needed. So next let's talk about the support arms because you buy the relevant uh, kit to suit your lift and then you've got these brackets which slide in and out which you can then adjust to the width of your lift and then you bolt these support arms and in my case I'm using product 6227600 and this is called the big wheel version uh, which I thought was most suitable for the track I've got on here and that is um, gripping on this edge because you've got this inner lip here and then the big wheel is sliding along the track and it works very well. So as I said, all of this is very heavy duty and impressive quality. But the thing that I wasn't impressed with is the way the support arm fixes to the jacking beam itself. And it is just two 10 millimeter bolts there. And they just seemed too uh, small. And I did consider drilling this to put some more bolts in here but this is thick metal and you've obviously got to go through both of them it's as, almost as thick as my finger so I emailed AC Hydraulics themselves in Denmark and said look what's the sheer strength of these two 10 millimeter bolts because they just look so small compared to everything else because the bolts that hold the wheels on are just huge and these just look too small so they are torqued to the right value, I can't remember what it is, but it's in the instructions. So that is clamped up very tight, but you've got the weight of a car, which could be, um, well, you know, if you're lifting a Tesla Model S, it's 2.1, 2.2 tonnes. You've got the weight of this, which is 120 kilograms. You've then got a bit um, extra in the support arms, but all of that is resting on a pair of 10 millimeter bolts so I'm sure it's fine and I'm sure they've thought of this and not made any mistakes but it just doesn't look right it just doesn't feel right so I emailed them over three months ago now and I've never had a reply but every time I'm using it and I've got a car lifted up I do think of these two bolts they just make me a little bit nervous maybe one day I'll try drilling this and put another bolt in there but anyway I'm sure it's fine um, but if you've got a car lifted up of course the car's not going to collapse 
it will only drop down onto its wheels, or if you've got the wheels off, it will drop down onto the uh, brake discs. Um, the car's not going to collapse to the floor, of course, because it's going to end up collapsing onto the lift. That will fall onto the floor, um, but it's not going to be a total disaster. So next, the price. Uh, obviously, prices vary, um, but anyway, I paid 1495 plus fat for each of these. And then these extension arms, these smaller ones cost £10 each. Those bigger ones cost £32 each. So they were rather expensive, but I thought I'd get the full suite while I was doing it. So they are expensive, but they're the widest ones I could find. And they feel good value because it's all just such heavy duty and such nice quality. Apart from that, you've also got these two grab handles here to move it backwards and forwards uh, they're nice and big I've got quite small hands but anyway big hands no problem at all so finally its closed height is 190 millimeters but obviously that can vary depending on how you mount the wheels and the support arms so there are I think four yeah four different mounting holes for the wheels in my case I'm using these big wheels and then you've got two heights for the bolts here mounting the support arm to the jacking beam itself so in my case we're only looking at 70 to 75 millimeters height above the lift so plenty low enough for even the lowest vehicle so i think that's all i can show you um, so yeah overall i'm very happy with them uh, they do the job they will lift the widest of vehicle um, Obviously, they're not just for electric vehicles, they're for all modern vehicles. Um, they are a lot of money, but uh, when I'm using them, they just feel quality. They, they're just so over-engineered, very heavy duty. They are very heavy, though. It's only those bolts, as I said, which is the only thing I'm not happy with. But, um, yeah, I'm pleased with them. So I hope this video has helped. If it has, please do click the thumbs up button. That really does help. And... Um, Ask any questions in the comments below. Okie doke.